Hey everyone, we're here to talk about what's new and there's a lot for us to cover. There have been over 3,600 new features introduced since last year's expo. So we better get started. I'll take the first 100. Okay, and then I'll grab the next 100 and see how far we can go. Maybe that's not gonna work. Instead of that, we're going to start by talking about the ways we continue to make MATLAB and Simulink just easier to use so you can focus on your work and not the tools. That sounds great. And then we'll talk about how you can do more robust software development as you take your designs into production. And finally, we'll talk about how we continue to improve our integrations with Jupyter, GitHub, Python, and other tools and platforms you use to get your jobs done. But first, some quick introductions. My name's Michelle. I'm the head of product for MATLAB. And I'm Jason, head of product for Simulink. We've both been at MathOx now for over 20 years, and we've been using MATLAB and Simlink for even longer. Okay, so we said we'd start by talking about how we're making MATLAB and Simulink easier to use. When I first started using MATLAB back in grad school, just about all variables were a simple double array. This was really easy for me to learn and get started, but made it tricky to work with real world data like text or dates and times. Let me show what I mean. Okay. So Jason, what do you think this number represents? Hmm, is this the number of features released since we both started at MathWorks? That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, this is how I would have had to represent today's date using MATLAB back in the day. Maybe not so easy after all. Of course, now I just use date time arrays. They display like dates, but compute like numbers. We've been building out this collection of data types for working with real world data for the last decade or so. Table has proven to be one of the most important of these new data types. We estimate that over 30% of you use table regularly. It's just a much more intuitive way to work with tabular data than structures and cell arrays. Since tables can hold any kind of data, not just numbers, we've never supported math on them. I mean, what would it mean to multiply the smoker variable times two? But you wanted math anyway, particularly when your tables just contain numbers. So starting in 23A, you can do math on your tables as long as the math makes sense for all of the variables in the table. I think the developers did a great job with this. It just feels like MATLAB. We've also made it easier to group and summarize your data with the new pivot function that should be familiar to anyone who has used pivot tables in Excel. Many of you also use timetable which is a specialized table for working with time-based data. You can now mark specific events within your data, and this makes it super easy to extract the data just from these events. And finally, we introduced the new dictionary data type in 22B. Dictionary is a general purpose container for mapping unique keys to values for fast lookup. If you've used containers.map, I am confident you'll find dictionary much faster and easier. So Michelle, we also have specific data types that you can use in your Simulink designs. And the new type editor, which is an evolution of the bus editor, makes it easy to create, modify, and manage them all in a single interface. Now we are also looking for ways to make it easier for you to build your models. So in Simulink, you can just start typing directly on the canvas and a block of your choice will just appear. We call this quick insert and it's been around now for more than 10 years. Now that's really good if you know what block you're looking for, but sometimes I just like to browse through the block libraries to get to the right block. But that's not always ideal, especially when you've got the library in a different window and you're selecting multiple blocks. Well, in 22B, we now have an embedded library browser, which makes drag and drop as quick and easy as possible. You now have the block library right in your model and you can drag and drop that way. And you can put the library on the different sides of the canvas. I really like this. I wanna pick up on that quick and easy phrase you just said. I think that's something both of us just say all the time at work. And programming in MATLAB is about as quick and easy as it gets. But sometimes writing code from scratch isn't the fastest way to get your work done, right? Using an app like the Signal Analyzer is often an easier and faster way for me to explore my data. Maybe converting it from time domain to frequency domain, filtering or viewing a spectrogram. 
And I love that the code for everything I do is just a click away to automate and reproduce what I've done. We've now got over 140 apps covering data analysis, image processing, wireless design, you name it. And we keep building more. More recently, we introduced live editor tasks that sit right in your code in the live editor. They're really just little apps that are very task specific, like in this case, for cleaning missing data. You try out different ideas until you get the output that you want, and the code is written for you as you use it. We've just added a new task for importing data, which is great because just about every analysis script starts with bringing your data into MATLAB, and this just makes it simple. I agree, live tasks are great. And just like importing data is the first step in data analysis, creating stimuli is needed to drive a model's behavior. So we added the create signal live task. That lets you create input signals interactively with this low code workflow. This is so nice. Okay, so we've talked about apps and live tasks that come with MATLAB. We build these to support the most common applications we see across all MATLAB users. But we know there's nothing better than an app that's been built for your exact work with your exact file formats and your exact analysis. App Designer is a great platform for building and sharing these types of custom apps in MATLAB. And since 22A, you can also create your own custom live editor tasks. Now, sometimes I just want to share a script with somebody without taking the time to write an app. But then I spend a ton of time writing up directions like, oh, go change this variable, but make sure you don't make it too big or too small because then it won't work. Now, instead of doing that, I just replace the variables with live controls in the live editor. And it's just like they're using a little app and it's foolproof. In fact, if you hide the code, it actually looks just like an app, even though it's still a script. And there have been some nice refinements to this over the last year or so. We line up the controls so everything looks a little tidier and added a few new controls, including this file browser. Michelle, I really like our updates to our low code approaches. I would like to now jump back to the create signal live task that I just mentioned a few moments ago. Now that I've created a signal, how do I easily use that in Simulink? Well, the new playback block is a convenient way to do it. This block lets you import signals from files or from the workspace and use in your model. We also have the record block that you can use to visualize simulation data as well as log your data to the workspace and to a file. Now, you can pair these two blocks together. This lets you create fast, repeatable tests by recording simulation data and then reusing that data for playback in other simulations. We've covered how you can quickly and easily build your system and create input signals. Now, as you start to simulate your model, you need to quickly understand what's happening, especially when you see behavior you're not really expecting. What you want to be able to do is step through a simulation block by block, just like you do when you debug your MATLAB code. And guess what? With this latest release, you're able to do just that. In the new simulation debugger, you can set a breakpoint on a specific signal and step through the simulation one block at a time. It works seamlessly across your whole model, whether you're stepping through MATLAB code, transitioning through some state flow charts, or iterating through subsystems you can understand what's going on and get to the issue as quickly as possible. Fast debugging is important, but I'm sure you appreciate fast simulations too. We've been working really hard over the last 15 years to ensure that whatever you build in MATLAB and Simulink is also performant when you run it. We've developed many features and capabilities to help you speed up your simulations. For example, I really like the Performance Advisor as it analyzes the model I'm currently working on and tells me exactly what I need to do to make that simulation go faster. A new area we've been working on is improving simulation performance for large system models that have a wide range of dynamics associated with them. For example, you might have a mechanical system that has slower dynamics when compared to a high-speed electrical component. Previously, Simlink would just use one solver for the whole system. So we introduced local solver support so you can apply the right solver for each component of your system. And by doing this, you can really speed up the simulation. So yeah, let's talk performance for MATLAB. 
I've heard from more than a few of you over the years that you'd like your MATLAB code to go faster. And we've made incredible progress since we started just in time compiling all MATLAB code in 2015. The overhead of calling functions and function handles was significantly reduced in 23A. I saw benchmarks in the release notes that showed them 1.6 and 40 times faster. So, all these things we've been talking about make it easier and quicker for you to get from your basic idea to insight. Right, but you don't want your code and models to just give the right answer once. You want them to be predictable and reliable. This is where good software development practices come in. We've been supporting production workflows in Simlink for years with tools to help you automate the verification and validation process as much as possible. And we've seen a strong interest in the same for MATLAB, like building and deploying an app to measure vehicle performance, integrating a risk model into a cloud or enterprise system, or deploying a signal processing algorithm to an embedded processor. These production applications all require high quality software. The new Code Analyzer app not only reports on issues across your code base, it even includes options to automatically fix your code to address those issues. And the Code Analyzer is now customizable, so you can set specific standards for your whole team. Now, well-written tests are the best way to know your code works as expected. And the new test browser is great for that tight iteration as you run tests, fix errors, and run tests again. The new product, MATLAB Test, layers on advanced tools for ensuring the highest code quality for mission-critical applications where the code absolutely must be correct, much like Simulink Test does for Simulink. And finally, the new build tool gives a standardized way to set up your build pipeline for automated testing and deployment. If you develop software with MATLAB, you won't want to miss Adam's hands-on workshop later today. So Michelle, as we do more software development in MATLAB and Simulink, it can get difficult to manage all your design, especially when you've got multiple people involved. Now, I've been using projects in Simulink for more than 10 years to help me manage all that complexity. And I was so glad when we added projects to MATLAB too. I love the ease of integrating with source control and that I can define the project path so everything works as expected every time. Another advantage I like is the ability to analyze dependencies and explore the project structure. You can also assess the impact of a file change on the rest of your project. Now, you can perform analysis not only at the file level, but also at the block level. You can check block dependencies within that model and run an impact analysis on a particular block. So far, we've talked about complexity of managing design artifacts such as models and code. Now, another source of complexity is managing design variation. What do I mean here? Well, when you're building your products, you typically have different options that you offer to your customers. For example, if you're a car maker, you might offer several powertrain configurations on a model, like gasoline, hybrid, or electric. You want to be able to create design elements that can be reused across these different configurations as much as possible. So how do you do that? Well, you create design variants in Simulink and manage the complexity by using the Variant Manager Support Package that we released in 22B. It lets you manage different variant configurations, analyze these options to ensure that you have a valid set of configurations, and it also helps you generate a reduced model that you can share with others. Now, I also know the products you build are becoming more software-defined. This is most visible in the automotive industry where a vehicle can have more than 250 million lines of embedded code. To help manage this complexity, engineers are turning to SOAs to define their software. And with model-based design, you can now quickly go from architecture to design and from design to code. System Composer now supports SOA by helping you design client-server interfaces and analyzing software architectures that can then be implemented and simulated in Simulink. And when you're ready to deploy your design into production, we write the code for you and help you target different standards and frameworks, whether it's ROS, DDS, or Autosar. Learn more in this talk about how Zika Intelligent Technology applied SOA to develop applications for their vehicle operating systems. 
So we've covered lots of new capabilities for developing production software. But as much as we love using MATLAB and Simlink, we know you use lots of other tools and languages to get your work done. Which brings us to our last topic, integration with these tools and languages. Visual Studio Code is the most popular development environment in the world, and Jupyter Notebooks are ubiquitous for sharing scientific research. We just released an officially supported MATLAB extension for VS Code and MATLAB kernel for Jupyter. When I've built something useful, I put it on GitHub and list it on the file exchange. We can now add a button to our GitHub repos that lets anyone in the world open and run our code immediately in MATLAB Online. So that's the tooling side of things. The other side includes the programming languages. We continue to enhance the C++ library interface, including out-of-process execution and easier publishing. And we make it easier to use MATLAB and Python together, including support for passing NumPy arrays directly to MATLAB functions. You can learn more from Heather and Jan during their workshop later today. Now, integration is also a core part of Simulink. As you build complex systems, you need to integrate components that come from different teams, different suppliers, and different environments. So we're working hard to help you bring all those components together and simulate them in one environment. Over the last few releases, we've built out many capabilities that enable you to directly bring in external components such as functional mockup units. And you can also build block sets from your custom C or C++ code. Well, in 23A, we've used that same approach to help you directly integrate Python code. You can set up a Simulink block from Python functions and just call these directly in your simulations. To learn more about how to integrate Python with Simulink, check out the recording from yesterday's session with Jan and Weiwu. In addition to integrating programming languages, we also integrate with 3D graphics engines such as Unreal Engine. This gives you the power to visualize your simulations in a photorealistic 3D environment. And we've provided domain-specific tools that you can use to build and run these simulations. They span many different applications, such as in aerospace, where you can simulate aircraft dynamics and flight controls, develop autonomous systems and make them even smarter by integrating computer vision and deep learning into your designs, validate automated driving and ADAS features in a virtual environment, or even create and edit your own 3D scenes and test your designs in a wide range of scenarios. And you can learn more about building autonomous systems and robotic applications in these sessions. So we just scratched the surface on the new features, but hopefully piqued your interest to learn more. Which reminds me, I'd like to put in a plug for Mike and Guy's blogs. They dive deep into many of the topics we've covered today. And Jason and I love seeing your comments so we know what you think. And we've just covered MATLAB and Simulink. You've got dozens of talks and workshops across eight tracks to learn more about what's new, from AI to wireless. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Hope you had as much fun as we did. <laughs>